Hello, Ramsey Burt here. This is my third video about the Polish Jewish modern dance artist Pola Nurenska. Posted on the Imperial War Museum's website is a film from 1944 called Kitbag Songs, which features the Polish Army Choir. In one section, Pola Nurenska dances while the soldiers sing an old Polish dialect folk song, Kiedem Jekyll do Dziwetski. This song is about a man about to leave his village to go to war, who tells his sweetheart about the hardships of a soldier's life. Nirenska dances the role of the village girl, the film intercutting between the singers and the dancing. And now in contrast, a gay Polish folk song, suggesting memories of a happier time. Generations of Polish country folk have danced to such tunes at fairs and festivals. In 1940, there were about 17,000 Polish troops based in Scotland. They had fought the Germans when Poland was simultaneously invaded by Germany and the Soviet Union in September 1939, and then fought them again in France before evacuating to Britain. And they were then quartered in the Scottish Lowlands. The choir in the film was started in order to give performances to local people near where they were based. After one performance in August 1940 in Coatbridge near Glasgow, Captain Jan Sliwinski explained that, quote, the choir was composed as officers from various regiments stationed somewhere in Scotland. In giving such concerts free of charge in aid of charities, they hoped in some little way to repay the people of Scotland for the great kindness which had been shown to them. Slivinsky first met Nirenska in Vienna in 1935 and it's possibly through him that she ended up working with the choir. As I noted in the previous video, Nirenska had been dancing to Polish folk songs since her teens in Warsaw and her repertoire in the 1940s included some Polish folk song themed pieces. A review from 1942 notes that Nirenska's village beauty, quote, is the beauty of the village and she knows it, and postures and struts and is coy in turn, unquote. Nirenska's performance in the film seems similar. Another review perceptively observes that Nirenska was not dancing authentic folk songs. The writer commented on the theatricality of what she was dancing, which convey, quote, the atmosphere and style of the particular types of dancing, 
by her own choreography and apt costumes rather than by performing actual folk dances and using actual costumes. The writer here is probably more familiar with the revived English folk songs and dances collected by Cecil Sharp and others. Such revivals were surely in part motivated by fear that industrialisation and modernity were leading to a loss of some essential, supposedly pre-industrial Englishness. Nierenska and her Polish peers, however, were coming from a very different place. After the First World War, Poland had become independent after more than a century as a divided country ruled by Prussia, Austro-Hungary and Tsarist Russia, who in 1795 had carved up and annexed what had been the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. In the early 20th century, folk songs were used in a modern way in dance schools like that of Janina Mieczynska in Warsaw, where Nierenska first studied and then later taught. Taking songs and folk steps from different parts of Poland and using them in new ways suggests a creative approach to folk culture that was very different from that of the more conservative ethos of the English folk song collectors. Choreography Nierenska performed with the soldiers may express nationalist sensibilities, but the fact that Nierenska was Jewish and had been living and working outside Poland for over a decade shows that it does so in a liberal, inclusive way. In the film, Nierenska and the soldiers never appear in the same frame. The editing cuts between singers and dancers so that we don't see the choreography all the way through, only a few phrases of it, so that there is little sense of the form of the piece as a whole. In what we do see of Nierenska's dancing, her hand gestures, her footwork, the way she turns on the spot, it's clear that she is not a ballet trained dancer. Instead, there are resemblances between her movements and the way her teacher and mentor, Mary Wiegmann, danced. For example, look at the smooth, elegant way that Nierenska sinks and sits on the floor. This is not something that you find in folk dance or in a 19th century ballet like uh, Sleeping Beauty or Giselle. But it is something that you find in modern dance, kind of acknowledgement of gravity, the pull of gravity, uh, and uh, a kind of welcoming of the, of the sense of being grounded as opposed to kind of balletic elevation. Let's look at her use of her arms and her hands to um, create spiral shapes around her body in a very three-dimensional way. This is something that this Deacon's Pastoral, it's a different kind of uh, uh, emotional quality to what she's doing. But again, she's using her hands in the same way. And again, in Farewell and Thanksgiving from 1942, which is more like what, uh, what Nirenska is doing. The hands being used to, uh, to say farewell. But there are this kind of sense of space, three-dimensional space around the body and using your hands and arms to, to feel that, into that space. Finally, let's look at the turning movement that Nerenska does at the end of the film. Here's Wigman teaching her turning exercise uh, later in, in life. And if you look at her pupil here, the hips go to one side and the torso and shoulders lean to the other side. So it's kind of off-centre movement. And you can see that although Nerenska is doing it more in a more stately way, there's still this leaning to one to one side and the hips going out the other way. But there are, of course, differences. There's a folk dance quality in Nirenska's solo and a joyfulness that's very different from the powerfully emotional expression in Wiegmann's solos. This is true of some other dancers who trained with Wiegmann. Andrea Mort has observed that the 
Austrian dance artist Hannah Berger, who trained with Wigman a year or two after Nurenska, quote, no longer had to concern herself as much as Wigman had with liberating dance from the fetters of tradition and was free to incorporate aspects of many different styles and art forms in her works. The same could be said of Nierenska's use in this dance of folk steps, costumes and facial expressions to convey emotions. So, what can we learn from this? The section of Kitbag's songs does not show Nierenska's most significant choreography of the period. It would be really useful if there were film of some of the pieces Nierenska was touring later in the 1940s. Her repertoire then included a piece about the Virgin Mary danced to an old Breton hymn, Dison le Chapelet. Reviews suggest that her homeless child was tragic, Felina, catty woman, slightly sarcastic, and a scarecrow remembers, wistful. These reviews suggest her choreography and performance were powerful and that they were well received. What the film of Kadem Yekel does show, however, is a confident, experienced performer with a strong presence who is clearly trained in modern dance rather than ballet. Recent research in mid 20th century dance in England is based on the assumption that the only serious artistic dancing at the time was made by ballet companies. The fact that Nierenska became hidden from history poses the question whether there were more modern dancers living and performing in Britain at the time who have also been forgotten. The dance scene then was surely more complex and interesting than we currently think. Certainly Nierenska is an artist whose work deserves more attention. Thank you for watching.